Hey everyone, Frank here. Today for the first entry in my Frank Plays series, I'm going to be tackling Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition, the remastered version for the Sega Genesis. Uh, this is an improvement hack that a gentleman who goes by the name Pyron made to uh, the original Genesis version of the game. Uh, I thought, you know, I was going to play just the Genesis version of this game for my, my first Frank Plays because it is one of my favorite games of all time and, and very uh, near and dear to me when it comes to significance, but I thought I'd play the remastered version because I just love what Pyron has done with this and I think more people need to know about it. So with that said, let's go ahead and hit start and get into it. Let's get it on. Right off the bat, people who are familiar with Street Fighter 2 will recognize that the intro here is arcade accurate. The gentleman on the left is an African-American gentleman as opposed to in the old 16-bit versions where they made him very, very light tan and his hair this weird, I can't even describe it, ethereal gray color. Uh, even back then, they were trying to be a little more politically correct than they needed to be in a fighting game that featured a, a heroic Japanese guy going up against a a dictator from Thailand, a wrestler from Russia, God knows whatever Blanca is, uh, a sumo wrestler, and various other stereotypes. I mean, this game was built on stereotypes and kind of embracing them. So it's funny that they would censor one thing, but let all of this other stuff slide. That said, Capcom made a hell of a game, so I'm not going to gripe about it. You'll also notice here that the fonts and the life bars have been improved. I think they've taken some inspiration from Super Street Fighter, but I'm not going to complain about that. I'm going to choose Hyper Fighting. Hyper Fighting is my favorite Street Fighter 2 variant. I know some people swear by Super Turbo, but Hyper Fighting is my jam. I'm going to pick Ken, his alternate color. In this uh, remastered version of the game, Ken's alternate color is kind of a off-white as opposed to red. I prefer the red, but hey, Byron, you did such good work. I'll let one one annoyance slide. I want to switch Ken to the other side here because I noticed in the uh, upper left-hand corner of this boat, Pyron tagged it. So if anybody's trying to pass off this version of the game as uh, something they made, they just need to see this stage and know who actually did this improvement. Now, not a lot has changed about Ken's stage here. The, the background coloration is better. It's been tweaked a little bit, but Ken's stage was always one of the lousiest I felt. I mean, the music is iconic, but the, the boat and just the whole layout of the stage, I felt it was better in, in the later games, but I could have done without this whole vantage point. I mean, were they trying to say Ken was a sailor? I love the uh, new fonts for the win and loss quotes. Speaking of fonts, the text on the world map is easier to read as well. That's nice. The other nice thing is the uh, audio. The, the voice especially has been cleaned up. From what I understand, Pyron used a driver that someone else came up with in three hours to improve the audio in this game. Which just goes to show you how much effort Capcom or Sega were actually putting into making the Street Fighter games for the Genesis. Because if somebody these days can do it in three hours, they, with their near unlimited funds back in the day, could have done much better. And yet we got a uh, garbled mess back in the day. Chun Li's stage here with the uh, signs with the Chinese writing on them. Uh, when I was playing against my friend Don and his brother at their house, we once asked his dad what the signs in the backdrop meant, and all he replied with was that uh, they, that they were nonsense. Nonsense, he said. And uh, I really should have had him clarify whether the text on the signs was nonsense or he thought us playing the game was nonsense. Because he was the type of guy where he could have meant either. 
Yeah, back in the day when MTV played music videos, he wasn't a fan of us watching that channel for hours a day. But I mean, it's what teenagers did back then. We didn't have the internet, really. I remember when I first saw this game, too. It must have been early summer of 91. Back when I was living in Seattle, Don and I went to Funplex. We were going to do some mini golf. And uh, we walk in, and there's a crowd of people. Must have been 20, maybe 30 people around a game machine. And we we just kept hearing the sound over and over again. And it was it was Iger, Iger. Like, what the hell was an Iger? What was that sound? And as we got closer, we saw that somebody was playing on the left side of the machine against the computer, which I later realized was Sagat. And that he was actually saying Tiger and not Iger. Now, interestingly enough, with all those people scattered around, uh, I didn't think to wonder then why he was still playing single player when he could have been playing against other opponents. But my hunch with that is he had probably beaten so many people up to that point that they were just letting him play through the game so they could hopefully get him off the machine. Or maybe he had beaten computer opponents here and there enough to the point where he was getting close to the end and People wanted to see the endings. Like This was still early in the game's release. I just remember that I got to play twice that day. 50 cents a pop. First game lasted maybe 20 seconds. I picked Blanca, and I chose unwisely. Definitely not the best character to pick if you're a beginner, even with his electricity. I picked Ken for my second character. Lasted a little bit longer. Got out a few random hurricane kicks. But it stuck with me, definitely stuck with me. We we came back to that arcade and other arcades and played that game just constantly that summer. Yeah, I feel sorry for my poor mother at the time because that was a year before I got a part-time job, so she was basically giving me money, and I was blowing it 50 cents a pop playing Street Fighter Two. And then shortly after that, Street Fighter Two Champion Edition. Which Champion Edition, that was when the game really blew up. Like, you saw Street Fighter Two machines in many arcades, but every arcade had a championship, a champion edition machine. I used to play at an arcade in Seattle called Spaceport, which was on uh, University Avenue up there near the University of Washington. Um, and I'm not sure if there's still an arcade up there now. I doubt it. It was up there for quite a long time, though. It changed names a couple times, but it was there for quite a long time. I remember playing champion edition there. Played Mortal Kombat for the first time there as well. And then shortly after Champion Edition came out, they announced that they were going to be releasing Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't Champion Edition, which was, you know, sad. But what you gonna do? I still played that game for nine hours when it came out. First day, nine hours. We picked that up... Uh, probably at 5 or 6 o'clock at night after my mom got off work, and I was up until hmm, 4 or 5 in the morning playing that. See, kids, if your parents tell you that they were always responsible, trust me, most of them were like I was back in the day. Playing video games all through the night is not new behavior, even if today's games look nicer. And the Super Nintendo version of Street Fighter is really where the whole thing exploded. Like Street Fighter 2 was hot in arcades, but when it came to Super Nintendo, that was it. I mean, that helped propel the Super Nintendo into the stratosphere, and it helped pro propel Street Fighter 2 into the stratosphere as a phenomenon. That's when uh, tournaments really kicked off, when uh, even tournaments for the Super Nintendo game kicked off. Everybody was playing Street Fighter 2 back then. Vanilla Street Fighter 2 at home, Champion Edition in the arcades. And then shortly after that, they introduced Hyper Fighting in the arcades. And that game, that that's the game that got me. I enjoyed playing Champion Edition, but when Hyper Fighting came out with its cool orange artwork and uh, extra speed and being able to do certain moves in midair, they had me. Kind of like Ryu has me here. I love Ryu's stage. I kind of got caught staring at it. It's just an iconic stage, the pagodas, the moon in the background, the clouds. 
in the arcade game, the uh, clouds and the moon slide across the sky, which I always thought was a cool effect, even if the moon doesn't move across the sky that fast. I mean, technically, the moon doesn't move across the sky at all, at least not in the traditional sense. I mean, it more orbits. Anyways, let's not discuss physics. I don't want to get into gravity. <laughs> Besides, I need to concentrate on Ryu here. Yeah, like I said, hyper fighting was my favorite version of this game. Still is. I think Street Fighter Alpha 3 is my, my runner-up. I just never could get into Super Turbo. That's the one everybody says is their favorite. I just couldn't quite get into it. I think I had aged out of the phenomenon a little bit around when Super Turbo came out, and I kind of came back to it after uh, I was out of college for a couple of years. Plus, Alpha 3 is just hella fun. It's chaos. Fun chaos. The only annoying thing about Ken is he doesn't do as much damage as Ryu does. So sometimes you, you end up with a, a timeout victory. Ah, well, a win's a win, right? Love that revised world map, being able to actually read the countries for once. And it wasn't long after Hyper Fighting came out in the arcades that it came out for the Super Nintendo. I always hoped it would come out for the, the Genesis, but... Yeah, the Super, or at least before we knew that Special Champion Edition was coming out, they announced Hyper Fighting for the Super Nintendo, and I pre-ordered that at uh, a little store, little-known store called uh, Software ETC, which I believe would eventually become known as... Wait, Software ETC would become EB Games, would then be bought by GameStop? Hopefully I'm getting that right. When Hyper Fighting came out for the Super Nintendo, man, I was so happy. That was the game I really played to death. I put as many hours into that game as some people put into RPGs. I love Honda Stage here. Just the juxtaposition of all of the uh, Japanese cultural imagery. The sumo ring, the uh, bath, the tile work with Mount Fuji in the background. There's a uh, Lantern on the right side here, too, if I can scooch him over there. There we go. And then, of course, fighting against E Honda, a sumo wrestler. The uh, cultural cues are just thick in this stage. I like how the water drips from the ceiling as well, although in the arcade game, the water from the tub spills out from time to time also. Now let's see, when did Hyper Fighting come out for the Super Nintendo? I want to say early 93. Maybe I'm wrong, but I want to say early 93, maybe late 92. It's hard for me to keep straight. I just know that Hyper Fighting came out and I played the hell out of it. Um, and then for whatever reason, Capcom decided to make Super Street Fighter, which was well-meaning of them, but I don't know. It's, it's slower pace. I just didn't get into it. So I wasn't exactly enthused when if, if that game was going to come to home consoles. So I stuck to Hyper Fighting. And the Genesis version of Hyper Fighting, which was actually in here, bundled with the Special Champion Edition, if I recall, that came out a couple months after the Super Nintendo version of Hyper Fighting. So Sega was uh, ham hamstrung on two fronts. One, people bought... Hyper fighting for the Super Nintendo, thinking that the Genesis was only going to get Champion Edition. And then when Sega announced they were going to have hyper fighting, it was two months after the Super Nintendo version came out. And the Genesis version of the game 
I mean, as is, not this version of it, but the, the untouched, ver unretouched version was pretty good, but the audio was garbage. And between that and the uh, 64 color color palette, it just didn't sell as well. I mean, two months late, it's not looking just as good as or better than the Super Nintendo or matching it note for note. It wasn't going to sell as well. It still sold, but not in the numbers it could have. It's just tragic to realize that some dude as a labor of love was able to make this game look more accurate and sound more accurate to the arcade game than Sega or, Nint or Sega or Capcom ever could. But even when this game came out for the Sega Genesis, I was impressed by it. Uh, it took me a while to really warm up to it because I couldn't get past the terrible voice work early on. Uh, but when I did start playing it more, I realized that, hey, there was something to this. The feel of the game was just better. The controls felt right. The, the um, hit detection seemed better. Just all in all, it felt more like the arcade game. And I later come to realize that that was because they put back in some of the uh, animations and hit frames that were missing from the Super Nintendo version. And the other thing is, when you increase the speed by adding stars on the Genesis version, it didn't drop frames, whereas the Super Nintendo version would. Alright, I just gotta get through Guile, and then I can go up against the four bosses here. Yeah, it, it took me a while, but the Sega Genesis version of Hyper Fighting slash Champion Edition is my favorite 16-bit port. I know the Super Nintendo game looks good, but the Genesis version just, it plays better, it feels better. And this version, this remastered edition here is super awesome. Which is why I say, if you have an EverDrive and the ability to find the ROM of this game and the patch, do it, you won't be disappointed. I'm not going to help you do that, but if you can find it, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, gosh, I mean... It's funny to think back in the day, I used to frown so much upon these uh, flash cartridges that would allow you to play games like this, just because, you know, most of, most people use them to pirate games. And I know, yeah, as I've said in other videos and stuff, people still basically use them for that. But the fact that you can now download improved versions of games, you can play games the way they could have been and should have been had development teams been large enough or been given enough time to do the job right is just awesome. Plus, if you're into sports game, I mean, sports games, playing NBA Jam with current rosters, just too cool. I mean, it beats that uh, 2K garbage that they keep putting out where they just want you to buy this, buy that. You know, they charge you like 70, 80 bucks for the game, and they want you to spend another 100 bucks on downloading crap. It's like, seriously, sell us the whole game or back the F off. I understand having a DLC here and there, you know, 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there, and then quit with it. But man, companies like 2K and even Capcom these days are just terrible about it. I miss the days when you could buy a video game and that was it. You owned the game and you could play it and that was that. And if there was an upgrade, you either bought the upgrade or... uh bought a new version of the game, but they didn't nickel and dime you just so you could keep up with the Joneses. I think Pyron added some more blood to the uh, portraits at the end. Balrog, known as uh, M. Bison in Japan. Makes sense they'd rename him. He uh, bears more than a passing resemblance to Mike Tyson. Especially in the original Street Fighter. He looked just like Mike Tyson in the original Street Fighter. Like, I can't believe they got away with that even with renaming him. And I'm not sure that the uh, use of his likeness would have fully passed off as a satire or parody. I mean, a boxer, in Las an American boxer in Las Vegas who looks just like Mike Tyson. But I like the American names anyways. 
I just feel like the final boss looks more like a, an M. Bison than a Vega. Iron did a good job of recoloring the spectators in the background. The ladies in their uh, gray swimsuits. You know, it'd be nice if they were red and or pink and blue like the uh, arcade version. But otherwise, no, he did a good job with that. Real good job. My least favorite bonus stage. I'm not a fan of bonus stages as it is. Bonus stages in fighting games just break up a person's uh, streak. And, you know, they kind of they affect your mojo. If you're, you're on a streak, why do you want to uh, take a break in the middle of it? But we'll see what happens. That's probably only the third or fourth time I've perfected that stage. So that's pretty awesome. By the time another 16-bit ver version of Street Fighter came out for the home consoles, it was uh, Super Street Fighter 2. Uh, by then, Super Turbo was in the arcade, and uh, I definitely knew that Super Turbo was a better game than Super, but by that point, I was starting to lose interest in new Street Fighter games. Probably because I was still playing Hyper Fighting, and I was very satisfied with it. And uh, the extra characters in, in Super and Super Turbo really didn't uh, make the nuts for me. Dragon punching is the key to knocking Vega off the wall. I still can't believe they came out with Super, but not Super Turbo for the Super Nintendo and Genesis. I mean, I know it was a question of timing, but ridiculous that they, they released the slower Super, even if it had the ability to speed up the game in those versions. It just, I don't know, it was it was too little too late. And I do like I do like playing that game nowadays, especially when you can increase the speed. Because the original arcade version of Super Street Fighter is slow. But if I, get, if I was given my pick, I'll pick Hyper Fighting over Super any day. Yeah, I think after that, though, I uh, picked up, I started playing a lot of Neo Geo games. Uh, first person sh shooters started getting big. Of course, there was Mortal Kombat as well. I mean, there was a lot more comp fighting game competition around that time, too. When Hyper Fighting came out, Mortal Kombat was uh, out on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. And geez, then they came out with Mortal Kombat 2, which I know a lot of people swear by Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, but Mortal Kombat 2 was just in the sweet spot for me at the time. Yeah, we, we owe Street Fighter 2 a lot of credit. Street Fighter 2 basically made the fighting game genre popular and kept it going for, for a number of years until... Uh, the King of the Fighters series and Virtua Fighter and Tekken and Soul Calibur and all of those could come along. I mean, all everybody out there playing the, the Dragon Ball Z fighting game and other modern fighting games right now owes, a, owes the world to uh, Street Fighter 2 and its sequels. And actually, the game industry in general. There was a time when both arcades and consoles were doing gangster business and Street Fighter 2 was the impetus for that. It really wasn't until the PlayStation and the Saturn that people started realizing that home consoles were more powerful than the arcades. So why go to arcades when you could, you know, get the same thing at home? And now arcades are basically dead. Kind of sad. All right, Bison here is usually my most difficult fight. I mean, it makes sense for an end boss that he'd be difficult, but I, I never was fully able to master his patterns. We 
which is funny because all he basically does is kick with that damn foot. There is one pattern he has, though. If he's knocked down and you do a hurricane kick above him, it's going to hit. Nine times out of ten, it's going to hit multiple times. That's funny. My friend Aaron teases me for how many times I've purchased Street Fighter 2 and all its various incarnations and re-releases. I've probably purchased this game 25 times in my life. One to one, gonna be a rubber match. I'll keep doing it too. If they keep making good versions of this game, I'll keep buying them. I bought the anniversary collection for Switch, Xbox One, and PC. And Bison has lost. And now Ken gets reunited with his lady love. Who, what was she doing in M. Bison's village in his compound? I mean, that just seems dangerous. It also suggests that Eliza could kick some butt even better than Ken if she's just traipsing into a dictator's village. But hey, a woman who wants to get married will do a lot of things. My wife can attest to that. She, she exercised the patience of Job. And I very much appreciate her for that. So that's pretty much it. That's me playing through Street Fighter II Special Champion Edition, remastered version for the Sega Genesis. Uh, I don't know when I'll get a chance to post another of these prank plays, but I look forward to doing so. Uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you have any suggestions for future games you'd like to see, leave those as well. I prefer playing retro games, so if it's something for the Super Nintendo or Genesis, that stands a greater chance of me picking it up and doing a video about it. And with that said, until next time, take care, everybody.